are. You are way maker, miracle worker, the promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Evelyn Amos. I'm a child of God and a worshiper of the living God. Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with me today. If it's your, if it's your first time here, please subscribe to my channel. All I talk about is my journey as a worship leader, a few things that I've discovered along the way that I keep discovering along the way. That is all I do here. Yes, so today, very briefly, I just want to share something that is really my heartbeat in this life. In this video, I want to talk about understanding how to walk in love, or just how to operate in love as a worship leader. Operating as a worship leader or a worship minister can be a bit tricky sometimes because as I've mentioned in a previous video, worship leaders are always judged way up there together with pastors, you know. We may not necessarily be given the term pastor, but just by being worship ministers and because we stand before the congregation to minister to them, most likely every Sunday or whenever there's a service in between service, in between the week, Monday to Saturdays, so we are judged like pastors, you know, and sometimes we are judged even more harshly than them because most people tend to feel that worship leaders are just a little. Pastors are here and we are just here, you know. But when it comes to judgment, our judgment is usually here. And that's okay. And so sometimes because of the way we are judged, it is a little tricky when it comes for us to operate in love and yet the Lord expects us to love. And I know personally that um, there have been moments when I feel so rejected, usually by people around me, <laughs> usually by the people around me or the people that I interact with or the people from whom we expect to get love the most. Sometimes these are the people that hurt you the most and sometimes these are the people that are very difficult to love. <laughs> especially our fellow worship team members our fellow band members our fellow congregants sometimes it's just difficult to want to interact with them or to want to love them especially if you've heard someone somewhere say something negative about you it becomes very difficult to actually feel to, to actually want to even be around this person because they've, they've hurt you and yet the Lord places on us the demand to love people. And over time I've come to understand that love is not a feeling. You know, when I look back in the days growing up, love meant having this gooey feeling in the doodly eye. A young girl looks at you in a certain way and you feel things. And you know, you look at a guy and you feel, oh, this guy is everything I would ever want in my life. Those days you don't even, you've not even lived a quarter when you're through your life, you know. And so for many years, I thought love was a feeling. And I believed that for very many years, that love is emotion. But no, I've come to realize love is not a feeling. Actually, God is love, and the Bible tells us that they that love the Lord, they that worship the Lord must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So, love is actually a spiritual, in a spiritual dimension. We may not encounter it. Yes, it may come along with feelings, and it's good when you can harness the feelings of love and feel loved and feel accepted. As human beings, human beings, there's that emotional aspect of love, which is a good thing. Because again, if you don't have it, then whoa, it's like you're dead. But God expects us to love. And sometimes choosing to love is actually a choice that we make very consciously. Why? Because you will encounter people that will not understand you. 
they will not necessarily agree with you. They will not necessarily agree with what you're doing. And the default position for human beings is to just walk away from them. That's, that's like the human being's default position. God expects us to love. God expects us to love. Loving someone does not mean that you agree with them. Loving a person does not mean that you agree with them, you agree with their opinion, you agree with everything that they say, you agree with them, no. Loving a person is you coming to terms with knowing that this person is different from me. Their opinions are their opinions, not necessarily my opinion. I may agree or disagree with their opinion, but I still choose to love this person. I still choose to do good things to this person. I still choose to do shopping for this person. I still choose to cook, wash, clean for this person. I still choose to take care of this person, regardless of a difference in opinion. So love is actually a choice that we make very, very consciously. The person may even treat you very bad. It may be a person who only comes to you when they're in need, when they need money from you, when they need clothes from you, when they need food from you. That's the only time they will approach you. What do you do? You can choose to walk away from this person or you can choose to attend to their needs. You can choose to spend time with this person and talk to them and try to tell them to live a better life it's a choice that we make, a very, very conscious, mature choice. It's not something that we are manipulated to do. No, love is a choice that we make. And sometimes choosing to love a person calls for you to actually go a little bit beyond your comfort zone and beyond your belief to just embrace this person. What am, what am I talking about? Think of a situation. Think of it this way. Maybe. So maybe there's a member of your team you don't agree with what they say, their, their opinion about music. Maybe they want to play a certain kind of music that you don't agree with. Maybe you don't like their dressing. You can choose to not gossip about this person behind their back and instead to draw them close to you by loving them by making them feel accepted that is choosing to love that person think about it this way look at your children if you have children that is if you have more than one child you know that children are very very different all of them are gifted very differently all of them operate very differently all of them have very different understandings in life one of them might be a bully and the other one might be toned down and, you know, just a calm child. Will you love the calm one more than you love the overactive one? No, these are your children. And it's the same thing with God. The same person who you think is not deserving of your love, guess what? God loves them exactly the way he loves you. That's one thing. Never forget that. God is the one who created the same person that you don't like, the same person that you can't stand. God actually created them and God actually loves them. Just the exact same way that God created you and God loves you. And so love is a choice. How about someone who does something that maybe we don't like? Maybe this is a worship leader and occasionally or during the week, they will go and sing in a hotel somewhere or in a bar, because that's one of the things that's very rampant in Kenya. Musicians will always be asked to go and play instruments in. And when you ask them, why do you do that? They will tell you genuinely, that's my source of income. I don't know where else I can get money if I don't go to play in the club. If I play in the club, I'm going to pay 10,000 shillings. In church, I'm not paid to do what I'm doing. so. How do you handle this kind of person? Initially, and I know I did that, initially I would judge the person and be like, how can they be playing in a club? How can they be doing this and that? But would I be paying their rent? No. Would I be buying their food? No. Would I be clothing them? No.
So what do you do? As I said, love is a choice. You can still choose to love this person. How about trying to get gigs for them that are more acceptable? It can be for them to play in a wedding, in a birthday, and they get paid. That is a choice that you're actually making to make this person feel acceptable. This the person will feel, this person did judge me. They're trying to make my life better. Maybe by your action, the person will actually... You never know. Through such simple actions, this person's life will start being transformed. I really admire... I really admire the servant of God, Prophet. And in this man, he embraced everybody witches came to his church they encountered they got born again Muslims came to his church they encountered God so aged I mean this man of God I don't care what anyone says about to me, he's one person who really displayed the love of God, like a man of God that I can look up to and say, this man is an embodiment of Christ in the flesh, you know. And I think we as worship leaders, we as worship leaders should start embracing other members of the worship team. Realize that not everybody can be like us. God created all of us different. Everyone in your team is very unique in their own way. You just need to find a way to love them, accept them, and you'll see things will start getting better for you, for the team. When we learn to embrace each other, love each other, appreciate each other's opinion, no matter how different, because we will always have different opinions. That's how we were created. We're all different. We can't all of us be the same. The minute we start doing that, we actually are making a choice. A choice to love. Love one another. And maybe when you start to lead praise and worship, one of the scriptures that I would like to leave with us is, Beloved, let's love, let us love one another. Let us love one another. God is love. If we have to be a true representation of God here on earth, we must choose to walk in love. We must choose to minister in love. We must choose to override our emotions and our feelings. Thank you so much for choosing to hang out with me. God bless you. I love you.